Hood. Under the Hood. I love this. I live for this. Just happens to be Frank Battleson's happy place. Right now, I'm uh, living my dream. I'm working on uh, good old American muscle cars. The 61-year-old feels most comfortable, surrounded by curves and chrome. This is the restoration world from 1968, 69, and 70s. Inside his two garages in Chesterfield, far from fast and furious, with surgeon-like precision, Frank restores classic rides from another era. This right here is a 1969 Dodge Super B. Frank's work, the joy, the charm of going back, represents a nod to nostalgia. No cell phones, no games, no nothing like that. It was cars and girls. This was the very first time that I ever drag raced at Richmond Dragway. In this shop, the past is very much present. These are what we call survivors. But one corroding clunker screams for attention. See it sitting right there in the corner. I never thought that I would get it. You'll find Frank's pride and joy. This is a 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air. A prized possession that looks better suited for a date with the junkyard. You could probably say it was in, it's in poor condition. Uh, windows are broken, uh, it doesn't run. But from bumper to bumper, Frank sees nothing but beauty in this jalopy with a story. It appears as though something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route. There's numerous people running up the hill. A dark history you won't find on the car's registration or title. Are rushing up the hill at this time. Stand by just a moment, please. I regard this as valuable as anything else that I own and as valuable as anything else that's in this shop. This 61-year-old station wagon was once owned by Ruth Payne. A lot of people may recognize that name if they know anything about the Kennedy assassination. Ruth Payne befriended Lee Harvey Oswald and his wife Marina. It's the only known verified vehicle that we know of that Lee Harvey Oswald ever drove. In the weeks leading up to President Kennedy's death, this car would carry Oswald's mysterious duffel bags. Mainly the rifle that killed President Kennedy was transported in this vehicle on several occasions. As a highly respected JFK assassination expert. I've been studying it for well over 38 years. Frank jumped at the chance, spending north of $10,000 to own one of the last cars linked to that fateful day in November of 1963. To think that Lee Harvey Oswald sat right here where I'm sitting and put his hands on this steering wheel, turned that ignition, used this selector and drove this car. Not long after the assassination, Ruth Payne sold her Bel Air to the next door neighbor. She did indicate that this car held some bad feelings for her. There it sat for more than 50 years, deteriorating until it went on the auction block in 2015. It's in poor condition, but we're lucky that it still exists. Frank says not everyone holds the aging vehicle in such high regard. There has been several people that have stopped by to look at this and uh, didn't want to get any closer than about two feet. While refurbishing vehicles is his specialty, Frank is leaving this artifact as the is. Now, now perhaps two or three blocks ahead of me. I personally could never be talked into restoring this car. That to me would ruin what I call the DNA of the car. A metal thread woven into the fabric of American history. When you start getting your mind around everything that happened and what Lee Harvey Oswald did, it, it certainly gets you thinking. Okay. Restoring hot rods, preserving the past, it's what fuels his inner drive. It brings me personally uh, closer to it. For Frank Battleson, this relic is the one that stands out among the rust. In the meantime, I'm just sitting here quiet with it, and it's my little piece of history. Something has happened in the motorcade route. Something, I repeat, has happened in the motorcade route.